Well, welcome everybody. Thank you guys for joining me for another episode of the Green Tea Room on Spotify. Thank you guys so much for coming through. I wanted to do an earlier episode just because I want to talk to a lot of my tea sippers overseas. There's a lot of stuff going on globally. I did a live stream about this the other day where I just really discussed a lot of the things that were just really nerve wracking that's going on in many different countries from the flooding to the food shortages, to the droughts, to this whole, you know, COVID-19 vaccine situation, vaccine passports, people not being able to no longer go to their favorite restaurants and pubs and things like that. And one of the things that I stated, um, I've been stating this for a while, is that not only will there be a vaccine passport, something to show that you have been vaccinated, but that all of this will cause a great divide. You'll start seeing it and people thought, no, you know, this is just voluntary. It's not a big deal. But we're slowly seeing that it's becoming more and more mandatory. And we're now starting to see people with these elitist attitudes. And today was announced that a restaurant in um, Georgia named the Argosy, I believe that's what it's called. They're saying no shot, no service. So yes, T-Girl Diamonds, honey, give me my gems, give me my diamonds, hit the picture, double tap. <laughs> so it's been insane. So I want to go ahead. Um, if you are overseas, please raise your hand. I want to bring the overseas people on stage first. Um, I'm trying to see if my co-host is coming through. I think she might have stepped off. But yeah, if you're overseas, definitely call in. I want to hear from you guys. But it is a lot going on. I want to start by playing you guys um, the news article that I have posted today on Instagram and on the Discord, where basically they're stating that if you are not vaccinated, you will not be able to eat at this restaurant. And pay attention to the news people, uh, Sharon Reed and Shannon Lanier. Pay attention to their elitist attitude. I think that's what bothers me. And then you have a lot of people on social media, particularly a lot of the blue check marks. Um, they're co-signing this and they're saying that this should be the norm and more restaurants should do this. So let me go ahead and play this for you guys. Y'all go ahead and listen here. That restaurant, Shannon, in uh, East Atlanta, mm -hmm. East Atlanta Village. Um, <laughs> Talk the restaurant it. owners had enough, okay? He and I would get along just fine, okay? Argosy is the restaurant. He's posted a sign. I want to show you the sign. Just like, you know, has no shoes, no service. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what he has to say. Uh, no vax, no service, okay? And he says it right there. What's, this is a very simple concept for the safety of our staff, guests, and the community. He says these employees are depending on him. And if he, so he goes around, now you know people lie, okay? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't lie because they want to be cute and make a stand. They think they're, they're doing something, you know, Marjorie Greenish, mm. okay, Marjorie Taylor Greenish. Mm. They're not, you're not. Mm. And so he goes around, sometimes table to table, and he'll say, you vaccinated? If not, you must leave. And already people reacting in the town saying, you know, this is ridiculous and we shouldn't have to put up with it. Well, you really? don't. He, he said, this is, right, this is his private business. He has the right to do it, okay? Right. And if you don't want to put up with it, don't come. And at the end of the day, like he says on the sign, this is about keeping his staff alive. They're entrusting him to be able to provide a safe environment for them to come to work, to provide for their families. And like you said, the least of the few, they don't make a lot of money as it is. They may not even have health insurance. So the, the least he could do is protect them to try to keep them healthy, try to keep them safe so they can do their jobs. And if you don't like it, you yeah. don't have to come people and you don't have to put up a stink either you don't need to protest outside yeah. his restaurant stay home just stay home all right so y'all just heard that and like i said it's the elitist attitude for me let's not forget that it was it wasn't like you know um <laughs> millenniums ago that we had segregation in the south you know we had whites only drinking fountains whites only can go through this door Black people had to sit on the back of the bus. And it's very interesting how the same people who grew up oppressed, and I'm not saying these people per se, but like, you know, generations before, are now the elitists simply because of a vaccine. 
Like, I just don't, I just don't get it. And my issue is this. Let me make this clear to everybody listening. Okay. I am not an anti-vaxxer. I'm not against the vaccine. I'm not here to denounce it. That is not my stance. Okay. My stance is, and has always been that as people, we should have the freedom to choose what we put into our bodies. If you have it good for you, right? I would never knock somebody for making a personal choice. If you don't have it, good for you. That is your personal choice. I just hate the fact that it's become so divisive. Like I said before, I have plenty of friends. Um, Half of my moderators are vax. Half of my family's vax. Anybody can tell you when they told me they were vaccinated, I never made them feel bad. I never came at them sideways. Nothing changed. Okay, well, I hope, you know, it works out. Do you feel good? Yep, I feel fine. Okay, cool. But then they also didn't treat me like the plague because I'm not vaccinated. And like I said, I have my reasons because last year I went through just a really scary situation. The people on Discord, you guys know, because I went into depth about what happened to me last year. I really didn't talk about it on public YouTube, but it was very scary. Like I, I literally almost died. Had I not gone to the hospital, had I waited another day, I would have been dead on my couch. So for me, I just do not feel comfortable putting something in my body that has been proven to cause blood clots when I almost died from blood blood clots not even a year ago, you know? And that's my personal choice. So it's very, very scary. And when I see things like this, when people are saying that people should be discriminated, because this is discrimination, point blank. Would people be okay with this if the same restaurant says, if you have HIV, you can't eat here? Because I'm trying to protect my staff. Nobody would be okay with this. Or if you have cancer. Or if you have, you know, whatever. It's discriminatory. And I just find it very, it's very unsettling that people are so okay with this. So I want to go ahead and bring my co-host down here, Lady J. Um, Lady J, you can go ahead and mute your mic. And you, hey. (laughs) Hey, friend. Hey. And Lady J is one of my vaccinated friends. Okay. She told me I had permission to tell y'all her business. <laughs> mm-hmm, you sure do. And can you tell the people I've never made you feel away, shamed you, put never. any of my opinions on you? Mm-mm. And I ain't shamed you either. I mean, that right. goes both ways, right? Because we've had, we chitty chat often about so many different things. And I've told you, hey, I went and got vaccinated. Why did I go get vaccinated? Because I'm transnational. Because I'm supposed to start school in the fall in the EU. Because I want to do this. And I want to protect myself as best I can. So how would I be to sit back and say, yeah, you should get vaccinated when I know darn well what you went through. Everyone's situation is unique. And you're right. Why are we doing this? But this is what human beings do. This is what we do. And we can't let divisive uh, politics focus and train how we we relate to each other. We're not going to do that. And me and you see through the BS. So we don't we don't play those games. Right. And for the people in the chat saying HIV is transmitted through blood. Um, pick any disease. I mean, like, y'all Thank always like, like to nitpick. Like, I just threw out a disease. We all know how HIV is transmitted. Pick TB. Okay, does that make you feel better? If people with tuberculosis were told that they can't come into a restaurant and eat, people would be like, no, that's not fair. That's wrong. Da 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 da. Pick any illness. Y'all always got to split hairs. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, y'all, grow up. Y'all know what I meant when I said that. We know how it's transmitted, okay? You know, but the whole thing is just really sad. Like, it's created such a divide and it really should not be. It really should not be a divide. It should be a personal choice. And the thing is, if you're OK with this, when they start saying that, you know, people who are unvaccinated, you know, can't go to more important places like, let's say, certain social gatherings, concerts, movies, you know, what I'm saying it's going to get to the point where it's like, well, damn, it's starting to feel like Nazi Germany. The whole yellow star and how people stood by because it wasn't them. Because, you know, well, I'm not Jewish, so it doesn't affect me. That's the vibe I'm getting. And it's really, really scary that it's getting to that point. Exactly. And Paris in the chat, um, I'm a cultural anthropologist and I'm a trained ethnographer and historian. And yes, this is human behavior. That's no shade to you, sister. I am saying that we as humans, we repeat 
history. And T just eloquently stated that Nazi Germany, yellow star, crystal knot, if for those who understand what that means, we do this. You know, we're, we're seeing that in the white collar sector of industries where people get to stay home, but then the blue collars got to go out here and sacrifice their lives. Nobody's really sitting back thinking about the 600 or thousand or so people who did or probably the same people why we don't have people out here maining the service industry jobs because they're dead. It's not because people want to stay home. Maybe they're not here. So people have inherent fears about what's going on. And this is something that People in power and who want to be divisive um, use to stow fear. And it is a human condition. That crystal knot Germany yellow star situation is a very good example. We've done it before. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, um, our GSME pictures, like, you know, this is really feeling like segregation. And we we're going over some of like the old pictures and the fact that people are so okay with this, that's what happened back during segregation. You know, the whites only drinking fountains and, you know, based off of skin color. And y'all can say, oh, you're being dramatic or that's too much. But y'all said this wouldn't come to pass. And here it is also. You know what I'm right. saying? They're forcing it over there on people. It's really bad in Europe right now what's going on. That's why they're fighting. Like, this is not okay. Like somebody just wrote in the chat. It's not FDA approved. So anything that happens to you via that vaccine, that's on you. They're like, OK, right. whether well, you can't sue, you can't. You just know what it is. So if people are saying that they're not comfortable with that, why is that not OK? Like, why has this become such a divisive thing in the country? And I think that's the part that's scary is that while everybody's so focused on the quote unquote has and have nots of the vaccine, they're not focusing on the fact that. There's a big food shortage coming, a potential lockdown coming. <laughs> right. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's basically here. You know, mm -hmm. shelves are steadily emptying. It, it's going to be a long, drawn out winter. It really is. And winter it's like is everything. coming. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. There's more to come. So let's go ahead and start bringing on some people. I know there's some people calling from overseas. I definitely want to hear from you guys. Um let me go ahead and start with Miss Nuno. I'm bringing you up to the stage. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Hey, T. Hey, how are you? I'm well. It's Nunu. Nunu. Okay, I like that. Where are you calling from? Um, Canada. Okay. So what's going on in Canada? Well, just to, I will keep it quite short, um, concerning the vaccine passports, for, for many months now, um, We've been talking about the vaccine passport and for many months it has uh, the ministers of uh, the federal ministers of Canada have come out to say that we will be putting a vaccine passport. It's not an if or it's not a when it's not an if. Sorry, it's a uh, it's it's happening. We're, we're mm -hmm. actually currently making the vaccine passport. And some of my colleagues uh, working in the federal government, not to say too much, because um, I'm also a policymaker. Some of my colleague policymakers are actually working on making this vaccine passport and implementing the policy. So it's something that's probably going to see the light of day by, I want to say, the end of 2000, uh, 2021. And the, tr the initial goal was maybe fall 2021. But uh, knowing how government works, I actually want to push it to make sure of it and also um it uh, it has uh, begun uh we, we've begun doing something that's like, I want to say, like the pre of vaccine passport. Example, if you've got your two shots, there's, a, there's an application called Arrive Can. It's an application that you have to download if you're Canadian or permanent uh, resident, or etc. when you come into Canada. And this application mm -hmm. tracks you and tracks your, 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 your COVID symptoms. And in that application, you have to put your proof of vaccination. You have both proofs of vaccination over shot one and the shot two if you do not download this um this app you are not allowed to get in canada you know in, in short of words and that comes from both canadian citizens and also people who are not even fully canadian citizens and things like that 
Wow. So it's getting really serious. You know, why everybody's thinking this is a joke and people are reaching, they're already implementing things like this in Canada. Listen to what this sister is saying, that you literally have to download an app Mm-hmm. That basically shows proof. So there's no just saying I'm vaccinated, even though no, you're lying. No. There's proof now that you yes. have to get it. So now let me also ask you this, because I remember when we had one of our Zoom meetings, somebody had called in and they're saying that for students who are yeah, that's coming me. from over. OK, so that was you for yes. students who are coming from overseas, like let's say you got the vaccine in the UK or you mm-hmm. got it in France. They're saying that there's only a particular vaccine, that if it's not the kind that they use in Canada Mm -hmm. um, or approved, then you'll have to do the vaccine all over again. Yes, um, if it's not the quote unquote the vaccines that the NACI, of the National Advisory Committee of something, uh, it's like the, um, the, um, the equivalent of the CDC in Canada approves. You have to take the vaccine that's Canadian approved and the current vaccine that's Canadian approved are the mRNA, which are Pfizer and uh, Moderna. And before AstraZeneca was approved, before NACI came out and said that out of the blue that we're not approving it anymore. So out of like overnight, they stopped giving um, the, the AstraZeneca. Meanwhile, the politicians and the, the media was heavily, heavily, heavily pushing AstraZeneca and heavily shaming people whom decide to not take AstraZeneca and wait for Pfizer and Moderna to be available, to be able to take well, these of all the people whom decided to take the vaccine. They were shaming people, saying that the best vaccine is a vaccine that's available to not, quote-unquote, shock around for vaccine and this was even before NACI came out and said that the mRNA vaccine Moderna and Pfizer were the preferred vaccine and um when NACI came out and said that, according to many people, it put um, a lot of mistrust in um, in the vaccine system. And the people who took AstraZeneca were scared. And uh, the NAS- NACI came out and denounced AstraZeneca as not being preferred because it uh, when you take AstraZeneca, it increases your chances of VIT. And that is um, technically, in short, blood clots and complications mm-hmm. due to AstraZeneca. And for women, there's a woman and many people who died in Canada due to uh, due to the AstraZeneca vaccine. And there's this dude in Vancouver. He got maybe almost two meters of intestines removed after taking the AstraZeneca vaccine. And that was a complication that he took, he got from it. And there's this other lady in Montreal that, that passed away from taking the AstraZeneca vaccine. And, so let and, me ask you this. So to the mm-hmm. people who had taken the AstraZeneca vaccine, right? Yes. So being that they took away the approval and said, well, this is not good anymore, then those people then had to turn around and get another vaccine. Oh, Would you no, be Moderna they, then or let these, Pfizer? They let these people no? slide. Then okay, so they let them slide. slide. Yes, mm-hmm. but now the only approved vaccine were the Pfizer and the Moderna. And one thing that I really do not like is that they're heavily pushing mixing and maxing vac- vaccines. Um, because people don't are not as comfortable with Moderna as ever with Pfizer in Canada, they're heavily pushing. You can mix and max vaccine; it's completely safe and etc. But I am not comfortable with mixing and maxing, ma- matching something that's not even. Technically, okay. it's it's still it, it, we don't we don't know much about these vaccines at all. Mm. And I took the first shot of Pfizer, and I got horrible chronic migraines which I have until now and I heard that Moderna is worse with migraine so, uh, migraine patients so there's no mixing and maxing here but they're pushing this narrative of just mix and max because they want to they want to use the stock of vaccines that they already have mm. now let me ask you this and Lady J you can chime in if you need to what also bothers me with this, right? So let's, we're talking on an international level. If they were really serious about trying to cure and minimize the effects of COVID, why is there not just one global vaccine? Why is there different vaccines for different countries? Because um, that was the issue they were having with Cuba, because Cuba was saying they didn't want any vaccines coming from the Americas. They were working on their own set of vaccines for Cuba. So that is the thing, like if you're traveling from other countries, Mm -hmm. let's say you, okay, like our good sis, she got her vaccine here in the U.S., but she's trying to go to Netherlands to go to school so she can get to the Netherlands and they can say that the vaccine that she got here in the U.S. is not good enough. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then and that's, that's another vaccine true. in your system. True. Mm-hmm. And this is one thing that's heavily, um, heavily bothering me because uh, just the fact that um, to me, it's like a different ranking of vaccine. One is preferred than an other means one is superior in, in, in their eyes compared to the other types of vaccines. And that brings to me a lot of xenophobia, um, xenophobia and, um, and elitist behaviors with different with different types of vaccines and different type of countries, knowing damn well that not every country can afford Pfizer, not every country can afford AstraZeneca, also not every country had the possibility to even have the contracts to have these vaccines with Pfizer, AstraZeneca, uh, and AstraZeneca, and also Moderna labs, because these labs were mostly focused on distributing and giving vaccines to the Western countries, not the rest of the world. So. How how can even mm. if these countries wanted to have Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, how could they have Pfizer and Moderna vaccines? Because they can't so even afford it for their people. Their Shan just said something in the comment, and Shan mm. hit that right on the nail. I can't remember exactly mm. what it was. I can't say it correctly. Y'all go in there. It says, depends on how the pharma company applied for the trials and the approval in the country. And that's absolutely true. What we don't want, I mean, it sounds like a, a, a one stop all fix. You do not want one company, one pharmaceutical company to be the, in control of creating a vaccine. You do not want a monopoly. That mm-hmm. is not what you want. What you do want is is a variety of different agents and institutions who are all going in at at one time that meet certain criterion for that region or that country to go ahead and get it done and make sure that the trials go through and all the things. I know personally, having lived in China and ever resident, still a resident of China, and I can't get back over there because the Chinese basically told me, oh, okay, girl, you took the Moderna, that's good. But see, what happens is you're going to have to come in here and pay to stay for three weeks, and or maybe it's two now, in a hotel, um, and then you have to get the Sino Pharma, Simopap vaccine, which does not work because the Brazilians, the Greece and somebody, the Greeks sent all of their crap back because it was trash. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, So then you have those things to contend with. You want different vaccines. You want, unfortunately, you want competition in this type of situation. And you're right. What about the second and third world nations? You know, um, that's mm-hmm. a whole nother conversation. And Tedros at the World Health Organization, what are you doing, sir? What are you doing? What is, I mean, this, I mean, it boggles my mind. I've been trying to d- ask this question and me and T have been talking for years now um, uh, about this. So I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on it, but couple, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, there were discussion about breaking, I don't know how the, the perfect terminology, but allowing the the patent of the COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer and Moderna and all these big firms for other pharmaceuticals to be able to use the patent to create the same amount of vaccine. So like this distribution and the supply will be faster. And uh, I believe this discussion even happened at the G7, but um, there was some push because according to other people still in the government, um, that, that, that goes against the whole point of a patent because people cannot make money out of a patent. But also, right. it goes against the whole point of humanity because it's also like a world thing. So anyways, long story short, the patent is not broken and uh, it's still not distributed to other type of pharmaceuticals. That's true. Mm. That's true. Well, that is well thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for calling in. You brought a wealth of information from Canada. It's my pleasure. I appreciate you. Thank you for picking me. Thanks, T. Definitely. We'll talk to you later. Mm, bye. Bye. She's made a lot of good points. I just, I love that. Let me go ahead and bring on Cersei X. Cersei, you're coming on the stage. Hello, Cersei. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. My name is Cer- it's- what? It's Cerise. Oh, so, you know what I'm talking about, Game of Thrones. Child. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I was, I was, I was thirsty calling in Cerise. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's fine. I've always, it's uh, Cersei t- um, Hightower from Game of Thrones, I think. I, I saw her name. I don't know. I didn't watch it. <laughs> but yeah, similar. Um, yeah, so no, that's fine. Um I'm calling from the UK. Okay. Um, I'm 
I'm I'm in south of England, Brighton, um, but I'm a Londoner, born and raised. Um, but I'm actually at the south of the um, of England um, on the seafront. So yeah, it's um, obviously you've seen the news. Um, London is now experiencing floods, which is probably a shock to no one. Um, you know, we saw what's but been going on in Germany. But you got flood twice because y'all had a really bad flood mm. last week, and then last night I was posting video on the Discord. I was shocked at just London just flooded again. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean. Um, it, what's crazy is is the stations and Walthamstow, which is where I grew up, that hasn't really flooded for years, several years. Um, I remember hearing stories about it when I was a kid and I was born in the 90s, but it was like, oh, that will never happen, you know. <laughs> and then fast forward... <laughs> Um, and it's it's crazy to see, you know, my friends that are still living there and they're on their way to work and she's like, OK, can I do this? <laughs> um, so it's it's very scary. But um, I I still think Germany, it, it was hit hardest for them. It's um, it's devastating. Yeah, um, they have whole towns that are not coming back in Germany. It's, it's a wrap for some of those towns. It, yeah, not coming back at all. You know, it's unlivable. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.